Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, cool. Um, my name is Adam Mark. Um, I'm from GDG Vienna. I work at Workflow, a nice company. And I'm going to talk about sentiment analysis with Google Prediction API. <coughs> the first thing I'm going to target is your data, how to post online, basically. When we talk about sentiment analysis, uh, it's something quite very simple. It's not that I'm not going to talk about how you love someone or how your feelings going to work, but I'm going to talk about your information you put online. Very simple. Uh, you have a smartphone, you have Google account, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, and you wake up every morning, hey, I'm fine, you put everything online, basically. Now, the question behind it is, how to sentiment analysis? It's just a technique or strategy to analyze your information. When you post something online, like, my notebook's not good, that's fine. When I wake up and I say, this letter is very fine, that's also good. But at the end of the day, assuming like my company wants to know how his product feels online, how you feel about your, about your, your product, the way is mostly from tradition you go to make some kind of survey and feedback from clients and fill some forms and give me, okay, my laptop was not good, please help me, or my phone was not really working good. At the end of the day, 10 years from now, there's another way to, do, to solve those kind of questions. And the first one is to no more use kind of survey to target some clients and stuff like that. But then the other way to do it is to use some kind of online data we are putting. So we have some kind of Twitter data stream, Facebook, Google Plus, and so on. So we gather all this kind of information with this kind of natural language processing to analyze them with some kind of data mining tools like Weka, Rapid Miner, and Google Prediction API, one of them, to help the companies focus more on what people are saying about their products, people's feedbacks, how to target more strategic uh, business intelligence applications, and get more results out of it. Sentiment analysis is the process of identifying and categorizing opinions expressed in a piece of text in order to determine whether the writer's access to the user's particular topic is positive, negative, or neutral. Sometimes it's based on natural language processing. When from natural language processing, you have, at the end of the day, data mining. From data mining, you come down to sentiment analysis, also called, basically, opinion mining. Why do we need it, basically? For the main application is in business intelligence, which means if a developer tries to use some kind of data mining tools and stuff like that to analyze some information, some raw data basically. You cannot just use it that way. Another point of it is to be able to interpret it. After this kind of interpretation of your data, you can subject it to the marketing teams. Okay, this is what we found out. People don't like the product because of this and that and that and that. That way, the marketing teams can say, okay, then let's try to turn it around. Let's make something new. Let's, make, let's focus on what you've been doing for a long time. And another way is that, as I said before, normally you used to make some survey and fill in. The big problem behind it is that when you give me a survey for like five pages, believe me, I'm really tired to fill it in. I give my names, where do we come from? Uh, I'm from Africa. Uh, what's your name? It's so long, I can fill it in. And at the end of the day, people don't give you the real feedback they want. It's easy for me to go online or Twitter and say, you know, the number thing is really cool than to go online and fill a form to give my name, my father's name, my sister's name, and tell you how I feel about my laptops. The other aspect of it is, for example, to have some kind of, you have mostly knowledge about subjective data, or uh, objective data, which means, in a certain ways, when I have this laptop, I can tell it's black. But uh, if I see, for example, your cup is, is pink, right? But you can tell me you don't really like it. And that, that expression, that information is something I cannot see from my eyes. Only if you express it. Another part of it is we can develop, as I said, it, new marketing strategies for companies. And also, to, if you have like a market like, let's say very simple, Facebook and Google. We all have social platforms like Google Plus and Facebook and stuff like that. It's easy, for example, for Facebook 
to know how people feel about Google Plus without making a survey for them. And also easy for Google, for example, to know how people feel about Facebook without making a survey for them. Which means I can use some kind of data mining tools and get all these people post online according to Facebook. And then I can analyze, okay, if people are so good about Facebook, maybe they have been using this kind of features that people like, they have been using this kind of thing that people like. So I don't need to make a kind of for online stuff like that. And the other way around, Facebook can sit down in his room and say, okay, uh, Google Plus is doing good. Let's see how people are really think, thinking about them. That way, the best thing we can do is use some kind of data mining tools to get information. And also to have more global aspects about what is going online. Before going on, if you cannot understand me, please, you can raise your hand. I mean, I tend to speak a bit faster and um, maybe my accent also might not be really easy for you to understand me. So if I have a problem, let me know. I can slow down. Right? Thank you. So now comes in Google Prediction API. I assume everybody here has Google account. Who doesn't? <laughs> OK. I assume everybody has Google account. Um, how many people here have their own companies? Great. Um, the thing is, Google Position API is just something like Weka. Who knows Weka? Uh, Rapid Miner. Cool. So uh, there's a lot of them. You can have also like IBM SPSS and so on. The main idea behind it is to be able to analyze the raw data we are putting online most of times or do some more advanced stuff. I've used Weka, I've used Rapid Miner for some projects. And then I found out there's also Google Position API. The advantage of Google Position API is that you don't have to go through some kind of key 45 algorithm or statistics, stuff like that, but have some kind of built-in tools that helps you call a certain method and get the data out of it, the information. Google Position API is a pattern matching and machine learning capabilities. It offers to provide this kind of features for you. For example, Let's say I want to create some kind of application that can perform some tasks for me. You give me some kind of data, your information, your whole life, what you do yesterday with your girlfriend, you went to dinner, you went to movie. Or uh, I want to categorize some kind of emails as a spam, for example. Uh, very basic. You have a kind of feedback team, or you have a kind of form in your companies, uh, you get some information back. Like, client can write in German, they can write in Chinese, they can write you in English, in French, depend on. The, the way is, for example, how can I know that what is coming in is English, so that I can target someone who is specific to understand English for me, or how can I know that the input feedback is in German and to put it to the people who are specified speaking German? Google Prediction API can help you very easily figure it out. How to use it, basically? To use Google Prediction API is something very simple. First of all, you have to create a training data, which means any kind of information. You can use some kind of Twitter data stream. You can you upload your, then when you, get, when you create the data, sorry, when you get it, like Twitter data streams, you can get it from online. There are some tools for that for free. Or you can just create your own stuff or from your company, some feedbacks and stuff like that. Then. You have to upload your training data to Google Storage, Cloud Storage. They have to train the API against the data, send the prediction query, and if needs be, you can send some more model to some more data to your model. I will show it more in an example. You can't, you try to really be light. So now the Google Prediction API gives us those kind of capabilities. I will have some information. Upload it to the cloud. I train it, I get some result out of it. How do I match it with some team analysis or opinion mining? First of all, I have to analyze a text string. Then, as a kind of classification with labels. For example, I want to know for if your Twitter, if your, if your tweet, for example, is positive or negative. For that, we have like natural language processing or in in opinion mining, a very simple way to do it. There are some kind of algorithm that can tell you happy is like 0, 0 0.8, which is positive, 
sad is something that's really negative. So if I have a sentence like, children are really happy, I can tell that this sentence is positive. And I can also tell you like, this one is sad, which means this sentence is negative. There's some more way, advanced way to do it. Uh, I won't be able to cover all the steps inside today, but sentiment analysis or opinion mining is about analyzing the data and trying to kind of make a summarizing of it, no whether the information is positive, negative, or neutral. The most difficult thing behind it is, for example, sarcasm. If I put something like, I can put something that should be, look to be funny, but it's not funny. Or you can put something to be like, sad, but you're not sad at, at the end of the day. So to analyze the information the way that you know, this thing is a spam, this information is a sarcasm, you can more advanced techniques. I'll be writing it in my bachelor thesis, but we have more way to kind of summarize the information using advanced techniques and trying to predict the information. So to use, to use sentiment analysis with Google Prediction API, you have some steps to follow. First of all, you have to collect the data, which means either from your databases, from Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Plus, wherever you can. Then you have to label this kind of data. Talking about label the data is something a bit more difficult sometimes. Because if you get some information from Twitter, there's some kind of platform that can offer you that easily. Or like exporttwitter.com, what I've tried. They give you some IDs, the tweets, the reports, the research, and stuff like that. But if you want to label it, you have to use some other tools like Weka, Rapid Miner, or some maybe IBM SPSS, which means you have to work again on this kind of data. When you have some kind of 50 tweets, it's easy, you can do it with your hands. But if you have something like 50,000 tweets to analyze, it becomes more difficult. So where Rapid Miner, for example, is really handy to kind of solve those kind of issues. Once you label your data, you have to prepare them. Prepare them means remove things that are not really valuable for you and break in things that are really good for you. Upload the data to the cloud storage. Then comes the most important part of it, to train the model. Train the model means Google Position API provides me a lot of tools, a lot of methods that I can use to tell me, okay, this is my input, project it for me, and if I put like, I assume I have some kind of test in English. I have some kind of feedbacks. I want to know if it's in English or in German. I can put in the guest here. Then I can tell me back this kind of text is not for German, it's not for English, it's German. I have something like um, Muy bien. They can tell me basically based on my model that I've defined at the beginning, this kind of sentence is Spanish. Then if needs be, you can update the data that you have which means maybe you have done it yesterday and today you get more input from your client or from your, from your users. So you can still update the information, upload it again, and rerun it to get some more updated information. Then based on that comes the conclusion. One of the difficult part of data mining, basically, is to be able to interpret information that you get out of it. If you have a kind of team that can do it, like Google, Microsoft, Apple, those kind of big companies have a kind of in-house built teams just to take care of data mining. You have like Amazon, if you buy something, they say, oh, okay, you buy a pen, you should buy also something else, or a book that looks good to it. All this kind of information, not because they have been following day by day to know what we like, but because hot millions of people have been buying it daily basis. So if they analyze it, they interpret it that when people buy books, they might like to buy a pen. You get make a kind of prediction like, okay, you know what, I have a book for 10 euros, that's cool. If you add the pen to it, it costs you 11 euros. But the pen itself is 3 euros. Oh, that's cool. So I save 2 euros. At the end of the day, because there's a team behind it who knows that if the medical combinations, it's easier for you to spend 11 euros than spending 10 euros. And the interpretation of this kind of information sometimes requires expertise, which means you need to do it a lot to be able to use to it. Because if the teams that analyze the information give a wrong interpretation out of it, believe me, the marketing teams will do something wrong, and the whole process is zero. So analyzing it is easy. Interpretation is more important. And 
When I try to research more about how to interpret it, at the end of the day, it's been on your ability to, un to understand statistics and probabilities. Because the output of those kind of tools that you have, like Weka, which is based on Java, open source, Rapid Miner, they have commercial version, open source version. They give something more statistical basis, which means 0. Point something something. And we need to be able to understand what this kind of 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2 means to tell the marketing teams, hey guys, you know, people are not happy with this, people want this, people want that. So, how, sorry, when I was talking about the data itself, this is the way it looks. They have a label and some features inside, which means, for example, I have something like sad, feeling kind of low, okay? Uh, excited, oh my God, that's it. Just had a fabulous day. Uh, I'm bored, basically. Eating eggplant, quite bored. I give this kind of things manually. It's easy to, to do them. But when you have something like, as I said, 100,000 people posting the same thing daily basis, they can sit down and be doing all of them. You have some kind of wake up mining, wake up the uh, rapid miner. When you put in your data, you say, okay, I want this kind of model, happy, sad, excited, annoyed, and stuff like that. It analyzes all the informations, weigh them, value them, summarize them, and give you, okay, this one is for sad, this one is for good, this one is for and so forth and so on. Then you can also add more features to it. Basically, you have the, the model, features one which are beginning, feeling kind of low. Then on the second level, as I said, you can update the information you want. It means you can have maybe the time, the date, and stuff like that. For the date, you don't have to put like uh, Monday 27th, April, something like that. But then you have some kind of way to do You can just put in fourth, which means it's fourth of this, fourth of the month, something like that. It can be different from platform to platform. Google Position API gives this kind of pattern to follow. Rapid Miner might give something different. Uh, Wicker might give also something totally different. So let's try it maybe, uh, I can show how it works, step by step. So um, here I have two informations. First of all, I try to get some kind of Twitter information from GDG Vienna, uh, the first Vienna. This was the last 50 tweets about the first Vienna this morning, 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. So uh, it's not a lot, it's only 50 tweets inside. The problem that I'm going to have here is very simple. Um, you see, this is tweets, IDs. I cannot use them as a model, which means if I want to use some kind of, I cannot whether it's sad or, or mad or happy because I just have some kind of integers where just IDs. Then I have the main part, the main part of it, which are the normal tweets. Then I go further, and I have like retweets. Tweet time, favorite, retweet, Twitter URL. If I try to upload this to the platform, to the Google storage, and try to analyze it, it might work, but I have difficulty to interpret it because I don't have any kind of model that I've set up to, to do it for me. So in cases like this, it's good to use something like Weka. If Weka can tell Weka, analyze each sentence for me one by one, and I have this kind of model that I want to set up, like, uh, for this one, if it's happy, if you see that it's positive, give it positive or negative or sad or whatever it is. Then, I have also something else, a normal text input. And this text is input is a, is a lot. So I have sentence in English, French, and Spanish. The advantage behind this is that, as I said, I have a team in my company and we get feedbacks from clients. They either have Feedbacks in English, French, Spanish, maybe German, or I don't know, Chinese sometimes. So I don't want to be there and read all those kind of emails and know, okay, this is English, for it to email t uh, English teams, this is Spanish, for it to Spanish teams, this is Chinese, for it to Spanish teams, uh, Chinese teams. But then I can make a kind of automation of the whole thing, which means based on my Google Position API, I can track the information. Okay, this is the email, get the input, analyze it. English, English teams. Spanish, go to Spanish team. Then make it easier for people to try the feedbacks. And 
at their own level, if they want to make more analysis, automatically, like using some kind of position appear to know whether it's positive or negative, it's the same routine again. So I'll try something with those both information that I have. First of all, uh, this is the overview of the Google Prediction API. <coughs> and I've set up a project that I call Prediction Box. In my Prediction Box, basically, the first thing that I have is the overview of what I've been doing this week, nothing at all. And you have to select the kind of API you want to use. If you go to APIs, okay, I have the BigQuery API and the Position API, I have to enable them. You have thousands of API from Google you can use. But for my project, I'm going to use only two specific, the Position API and the Google Cloud Storage. So when I've enabled both of them, I have to go to Cloud Storage, which is this one. And the Cloud Storage, I have the opportunity to kind of create a bucket where I can store my information. You can create a new folder, have thousands of projects to run, but only have two, very simple. And you can also have a kind of project dashboard, which shows you basically your information, overview, billing, and stuff like that. Of course, I've already been using Google API. Anyone? Any kind of Google API? You Google API already? Okay. The, the thing is, uh, they can ask you a lot of information at the beginning, like the billing address and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, you will be able to set up, an, for this project, set a kind of non-business non -business, uh, account, which means I don't have to pay anything basically for it. So uh, I have this kind of information, my tweet from this morning, and a text input. So for the tweet, I go here and I have the API Explorer, and in this kind of API Explorer, I have different kind of stuff that I can do. And the first thing I have to do in this kind of prediction API, sorry, in the API Explorer, you have different kind of stuff you can choose, for example. For me, I have to do the prediction API, the last, latest version, 1.6, and give me those kind of model I can use. Prediction hosted model, predict, uh, trend models analyzed, and so forth and so on. To start, I'll use the trend model insert. If I take it, you can ask me the project name or the project ID. The project ID is nothing else than what I have on the overview of my project, this number. Copy it. Place it there. The field, you can leave it. It's not really important. Then comes the request body. The request body, you can choose what you want to do, basically. From the request body, I want to use an ID, and I want to use also storage data location. The okay. ID is something unique that I can use to identify the model I'm using for this kind of project. I'm going to say um, tweet test, and for the storage data location, I'm going to use item bucket, the first S. important part of it is to be able to enable the authorization to request it and then you can try like execute. Okay, I got an error. This me to require you to be authenticated you may need to activate the mode above the mission. Okay.
Good. Now it looks good. So the first time that I print the data, it gives me okay. It means it's good to go. There's no mistake inside. And the second level is to go back again and then to use this field, the get. First of all, I use the insert to cut the data that I have. Now I'm going to use the get train model gets, which means to train to to check the training status of my models, the input that I have. So the same thing, um, the IG was test and okay. Thank you. Yeah, I got this. Okay, I got an error. It works, it's fine, but then there's something down here. Error, too few instances in data set. Which means I only have like 50 tweets. It's not enough to run something really valuable at the end of the day. So 50 tweets, I can read this like in 15 minutes. Like, okay, you know, people are not happy, it's fine. So let's try something different now. Something where I have some, a bit more information, basically. Um, I'll go again to, sorry, not to train the model, insert, project ID, a moment, to use something now, something quite a little bit different. So I have the same project and I'm going to use some input. I have some ID and storage location. This time I'm going to use the language. Language the detection. And I have the same place for the storage. Add them back at ID, I'll keep it in mind because I'll use it again to print the data. So, you run it, it's fine. Okay, good. Now, I go back again and I choose, here comes sometimes a some little bit confusion. If you don't pay attention, you can use the posted model predict instead of the trainer, trainer, trained model predict, sorry. I had this kind of mistakes and it's, it's a bit annoying because at the end of the day, if you use some kind of hosted model project, it can ask you to bring in some models that hosted some on a certain server. And it gives you error over and over and over again. So I'll choose the trend model project, and my project ID. The ID I'm using here is language. Section, I guess. The fields, I leave it free. Here I choose some input. And CSV instance. So, in my text, I have three stuff, three models. English, French, and somewhere along the line, I should have Spanish. So I'm going to see if a test comes in, whether it's English, French, or Spanish. So um, 
Let's put some tests inside. Which kind of test I can put inside? French? Please? French? Okay. Uh, um, okay. Spanish? Good. So, let's try this one. It gives me my sentence in English, which is somehow wrong. My sentence is basically in French, but... <laughs> My sentence is in French, but then it tells me it's in English. And the funny thing is, it gave me 100% sure. One. <laughs> Let's try it again. Um, okay. Um, muy bueno. So, muy bueno. Now we wouldn't seem to be good. It gives me Spanish, 100%. <laughs> well, why it gives me comment level English, 100%? I really don't know, but well, <laughs> uh, yeah. So somehow this is what I have. Probably. I think well, maybe because it gives me. Maybe you read the comment, which is English, <laughs> but then the rest was basically in French. Let's start something more in French and see quickly. Um, a French word that's not in English. Who speaks French here? Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. S'il vous plaît. Okay. Google, s'il vous plaît. Oh. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> but, that is a bit embarrassing. Please? Probably. English, French. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. Set me nice. <laughs> uh, let's see how do I so okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um if it is, it's a bit interesting to know that some some sentences in French can be output in English, which is some some ca somehow wrong. But then, I'm quite curious to know why it happens because I didn't have this. Yeah, please. Okay. Cette menace à cheval d'intimité. Okay. It gives me English. <laughs> okay, let's try maybe put more input inside, like, um, okay, here, yeah, this one, add something more to it. Oh, wait, no. Uh oh, sorry. Something like that, right? <laughs> okay, so there's some kind of, you know, um, sample data inside and let's execute it. Google, please be nice to me. 
Well, um, somehow I don't know why it's not working. Uh, the way I was supposed, it was supposed to be. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't give more <laughs> interesting stuff out of it. But then, as I said, it, it's something sometimes really interesting to know that your information is posted online. You're like, okay, you know, I went to Burger King, I went to McDo's. And basically, it's what's making, for example, companies like Google, Microsoft, and Facebook running. Google is based mostly, mostly on, on advertisements. And those advertisements is nothing more than what you post online. So if you don't post anymore, Google will collapse. I'm kidding. <laughs> but then, as I said it, you can use the information and train them and get out of it. So this kind of position I'm doing, which means next time when they give me some input from clients, from users, whatever it is, I can easily know, okay, this one is for English, German, stuff like that. This is the basic one. Yeah, please. The one, okay, yeah. The score means that, okay, this thing is 100% English. Confidence level, exactly. So, <laughs> funny, uh, normally she should basically something different than 100. Normally. In my case, uh, is it? A certain presentation. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Uh, I wish it could have shown me something more different than 100. Uh, in some other cases, you can see something like 0.35, 0.63, and stuff like that. So it means that the confidential level is a bit more between, it's not really 100% sure. It should be 100% sure, basically, because you can never know what cannot be 100% English. It can be used in other languages as well. Uh, but as I'm saying, the prediction helps you to know that the next input that's going to come might probably go this way. On more advanced level, you can try to know that, okay, people are really positive or negative about my product. Yeah, please? <laughs> maybe, uh, I can really, basic, I can really be 100% sure that the API is mostly on English, that's why I'm getting uh, always 100%, because it shows me somehow 100% French also, which is quite weird. So, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But because um, some sample data, some sample test gives you really good stuff like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, depend on. But in my case, it gives me something totally wrong. Um, I hope you have, see, have enough minutes? Six minutes, thank you. So. Basically, yeah, that's the way it is. I'm, I'm sorry I couldn't give more interesting stuff like the prediction itself. Uh, it's giving only 100% every time. So, <laughs> sorry for that. But then, yeah, that's sentiment analysis, Google Prediction API. Questions, please. Yeah, just a minute. Please, I didn't get your word. Okay, it's not a replacement. It doesn't add more functionalities. Maybe it's a kind of competitive product, I should say. Which means you can do the same thing basically with Weka or with Rapid Miner, but. If you have used Wake Up before, or Rapid Miner can believe me, you have to be really good at statistics to really use it. Because I've used it for some projects, and at the end of the day, you get a lot of outputs when you ask yourself, um, okay, uh, because it gives you a lot of statistic output out of it. And what is good about Google Prediction API, you, you get some tests like, okay, this is this, this is that, and so, forth, and, and so on. It's not a replacement to it, you can use both at the same time. I'll even tell you to use maybe Rapid Miner or Weka to kind of prepare your data that you want to put into Google Prediction API. So that it helps you to get more accurate output out of it. So both can be combined. Weka is open source based in Java. And you can even put a, 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 can even implement your own extension to it, I think. Rapid Miner is more it have commercial level open source level, which means the new version is commercial, the older one becomes automatically open source. And it's also good stuff. The 
one of you both basically I think rapid miner was good at the level because it gives me some more easy way to go by issues. Weka, as I said, used to be really good. That's not too much good, but you need to know statistics, probabilities, and know where and when and how to use all of them. Did I ask your question? Is it? Okay. Questions? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, to define something like minimum uh, confidential confidence level for for an input or for a data is that it's first of all depending on which kind of project you are running. But then I can tell everything that is beyond 60%, 30, 70% is good. If if you have some kind of real input and you get some kind of confidential confidence level like 0 0.6, 0 0.7, it's, it's really good. It gives some more a little bit good accuracy about it. Below 0 0.6. I think. Uh, okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see something quick. Let's go back to my stuff that never worked for me. Just so to quickly refresh it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, definitely there's something wrong with my API. I, I don't know, but somehow it's not giving me something really, something good, to be honest. Um, I'm sorry, but I think <coughs> it runs okay. Show details, fine. The output is not, it's just not working. Uh, okay, I'm going to try this thing. Oh, the input is still wrong. It shouldn't behave this way, to be honest. <coughs> it shouldn't behave this way. It's quite embarrassing when on presentation the, the demo doesn't work. It's always embarrassing. Um, yeah. But then it should normally work if everything was fine. You should get something like, in this case, it can give you something like 0 0.2 or something like that, basically, normal, in normal cases. So this case is not working. I'm sorry, really, really sorry. I wish it worked. But yeah, that's good prediction API. Get sentiment analysis, opinion mining, natural language processing. Thank you. Questions? No? Yeah, please. Okay. To change the algorithm behind it, it might be possible, but then Google asks you to, you know, contribute a little bit. Yeah, which means because there are some kind of not all of, not all kind of uh, functionalities are free in this version. Which means there are some more advanced stuff algorithm, but then you need to have a kind of business uh, business account for it to be able to use all of them. For this sample data, I just use something non-business level and just to show how it works. But then, of course, we can we can do it basically to change the algorithm itself, like to program your own algorithms. You have some kind of client level, uh, client application you can download and use it. 
or if you want more stuff, you can use maybe Weka. You can code your own algorithms, export it into Weka, import into Weka, and then use it as well. So it's possible to extend it. Yeah. Questions? Anyone? Person? Thank you very much. <laughs>